Hello everyone, greetings to all. Welcome to our Civil Engineering Objective channel. In this video, we are going to see about very very interesting 10 MCQ questions in our Civil Engineering subjects with lot of explanations. Now we will see the questions. The first question is, which one of the following related to domestic potable water quality is correct? So they will given the four limits and they asked which one is correctly matched according to domestic portable water quality. So we will see the options. Option A. Turbidity on silica scale is 15 to 20 ppm or milligram per liter. So according to domestic portable water quality, the turbidity is limited to 5 ppm or milligram per liter. So option A is not related to domestic portable water quality. And option B, color on Gopal scale is 15 to 25 ppm or milligram per liter. So according to domestic portable water quality, the color on a Gopal scale is limited to 5 ppm or milligram per liter. So option B is also not related to domestic portable water quality. And option C, hardness is 75 to 115 ppm or milligram per liter. It is slightly related to domestic portable water quality. For normally, the domestic portable water quality hardness is soft. That is in the range of 60 to 120. So option C is slightly matched and we will wait after seeing the option D, we will confirm it. And option D, BOD is 20 ppm or milligram per liter. For normal domestic portable water quality, the BOD should be nil. So option D is also wronger one. So according to this question, the correct answer is option C. So turbidity is 5 ppm, color is 5 ppm, hardness is 75 to 115 ppm or milligram per liter and BOD is nil. And we will and we will move to the next question. Presence of which one of the following in water is a major cause of depression paralysis, blindness and or birth defects. And they asked what is the major cause of depression paralysis, blindness and or birth defects. So they will given the four options or minerals. Option A Cadmium, Option B Chromium, Option C Manganese, Option D Mercury. So we will see one of the one, one by one options. Option A Cadmium. When Cadmium is present in the water, it causes liver injuries, not depression paralysis, brainless birth defects. So Cadmium present in the water, it causes liver diseases. So option A is wronger one. Option B Chromium. When Chromium is present in the water, it causes stomach cancers. So it's Stomach cancer is a major cause of chromium. So it's not related to depression, paralysis, blindness and or birth defects. So option B is the wronger one. Option C, manganese. When manganese is present in the water, it causes side effects like headache, muscle rigidity and etc. So it's not related to depression, paralysis, blindness, birth defects. So option C is also wronger one. Option D, mercury. Yes. When mercury is present in the water, it causes depression, paralysis, birth defects, blindness, etc. So according to this question, the correct answer is mercury. So please remember when cadmium is present in the water, it causes liver injuries. When chromium is present in the water, it causes stomach cancers. And manganese present in the water, it causes side effects like headache, muscle rigidity. And mercury is present in the water, it causes depression, paralysis, blindness and birth defects. Now we will move to the next question. Which one of the following pairs is not correctly matched? They will given four pairs and asked which one is not correctly matched. So we will see the, the four pairs first. Option A, lamb is constant, thick cylinder. Yes, Lamis constant is purely related to thick cylinder. We using the Lamis constant to find out the stress of the thick cylinder. So it is correctly matched. Option B, Michaelis method, deflection of beams. Yes, we are using Michaelis method to find out the deflection of beams. So it is 
also matched one option c ils method theory of columns yes ils method is used to find out the critical load of the columns so it is related to theory of columns option d eddy's theorem tarshnov shafts yes eddy's theorem is not related to tarshnov shafts it is related to arches so option d is not correctly matched one so according to this question the correct answer is option d now we will move to the next question which is the best sever material to resist hydrogen sulfide corrosion they asked which one is the best material to resist the hydrogen sulfide corrosion please remember hydrogen sulfide corrosion while we are using concrete and steel materials as a sever means it can't resist the hydrogen sulfide corrosion the best sever material to resist hydrogen sulfide corrosion is glassed stone ware so in this question the correct answer is option a glassed stone ware is the best material to resist the hydrogen sulfide corrosion and not rcc and are not concrete are not steel this kind of material can't resist the hydrogen sulfide corrosion now we will move to the next question which one of the following structures can be classified in a system of coplanar forces they will given the four structure names and they asked which one is classified in a system of coplanar forces so first we we will know what is the system of coplanar forces so system of coplanar forces are nothing but all the forces are acting in a single plane the forces may be concurrent non concurrent parallel non parallel so that is called a system of coplanar forces so they will given the four structure names option a grid option b a plane pin jointed truss option c a shaft option d a stab so in this question the correct answer is a plane pin jointed truss so it is classified in a system of coplanar forces so in this structure only all the forces are acting in a single plane so system of coplanar forces are nothing but all the forces are acting in a single plane so that forces may be concurrent non concurrent parallel and non parallel now we will move to the next question a turn table on railways is used for a turn table a turn table nothing but it is a device it is used for turning the railroad rolling stock and a turn table is also known as it's a wheel house so it is mainly used to reverse in the direction of engine so when the train come in in the direction we want to reverse the direction of engine means in a railways the turn table device is used so a turn table is a device it is used to reverse in the direction of the engine so it is also known as wheel base So according to this question the correct answer is option B option B reversing the direction of the engine a turn table on a railways is used for reversing the direction of the engine now we will move to the next question which one of the following specifications for length of base line refers to third on, third order triangulation system they asked what is the length of base line according to third order triangulation system so triangulation system majorly classified into three types namely primary triangulation system secondary triangulation system tertiary triangulation system or single order triangulation system double order triangulation system third order triangulation system so these three kind of triangulation system have different kind of specifications for a first order triangulation system means the length of base line is 5 to 15 km for a second order triangulation system means the length of base line is 1.5 to 5 km for a third order triangulation system means the length of base line is 0.5 to 3 km so according to this question the correct answer is option a 0.5 to 3 km so please remember for a first order means the length of base line is 5 to 15 km and second order means 1.5 to 5 km and third order means 0.5 to 3 km 
now we will move to the next question two columns c1 and c2 are the same materials column c1 as both ends are hinged while column c2 as one end hinged and other end fixed what is the ratio of the critical load for for c1 to the top c2 according to the ils form so they ask what is the ratio of critical load of c1 to c2 so they will given the two columns namely c1 and c2 and c1 as both ends are hinged so according to ils formula the c1 column have a critical load of pi square e i divided by l square so please remember for both ends are hinged in this case the critical load is pi square e i divided by l square and the column c2 as one end hinged and other end fixed so for this condition the critical load of a column c2 is 2 pi square e i divided by l square so please remember the column c1 means it's a pi square e i by l square and column c2 means the both ends one end hinged and other end fixed so it is 2 pi e square divided by l square when we divide the both c1 to c2 critical loads we will get 1 by 2 that is pi square e i divided by l square divided by 2 pi square e i divided by l square when we divide the when we solve that problem means we will get 1 by 2 so in this question the correct answer is option b 1 by 2 is the correct answer now we will move to the next question guide banks are provided so first we will know what is guide bank so guide bank is nothing but it is a structure it is constructed to the parallel direction of the flow of a river so it is one of the river training work so guide banks in this concept majorly used for to reduce the cost of construction of bridges weirs and that that like structures so for that purpose only the guide banks are designed so firstly the guide banks designs are invented by bellies so for the reason only the guide banks are all also known as bellies banks so guide banks are nothing but it is a structure to guide the flow of a river for a particular path or for, for a particular reasonable path that is called guide banks so it is also known as bellies banks so according to this question the correct answer is option a guide banks are to provided to train the flow of a river along a specified course so option a is the correct one now we will move to the next question what is the number of categories into which masonry buildings are divided on the basis of earthquake resistant futures so for they asked the basis of earthquake resistant futures and what are the categories the masonry buildings are divided they asked the categories number of categories on the basis of earthquake resistance futures so according to the basis of earthquake resistant futures there are five number of categories the masonry buildings are divided so in this question the correct answer is option a five the five number of categories the masonry buildings are divided on the basis of earthquake resistant futures Thank you thanks for watching watching this video if you are liked this video means please comment your valuable feedbacks in comment section and also please subscribe our channel for more videos thank you